thank you so much for sitting down with me. Um, Thanks for having me. Before we start about this this food, we're in the Betterment, in the Biltmore. Um, yep. This is your return to Mayfair. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean to you? Well, you know, I uh, Mayfair's Mayfair, right? Who who does not want to operate a restaurant in Mayfair? And when I first had the opportunity alongside Gord to open up Mays in 2005, mm. and that restaurant became an instant cult classic. It was, you know, a wonderful thing to, to I had a little flat uh, down in Lambeth at the time and to, to wake up every day, come to Mayfair mm. on my little Vespa, work in this stunning restaurant alongside one of the world's greatest chefs. Yeah. I was like, God, oh, so lucky, you know? And then literally eight, nine, 10 months later, we won the Michelin star, which became my, the first time I'd ever won a Michelin star. What did that feel like? It was amazing, Jen. It was amazing. And, and, and the restaurant shot straight in at four rosettes, straight in, uh, uh, I think it was like seven out of 10, the good food guide. And as a young cook, I just wasn't ready for that amount of attention. And right. we went straight into the world's 50 best. And I was like, gosh, it's like crazy, do you? Mm. But it was still like heads to the stove, pushing harder, better, trying to make the restaurant better. And then, you know, opportunity struck for me to do my own restaurant. And, yeah. And, you know, I left, did Holland Street Social, which is hanging on to Mayfair by the skin of its teeth. Is it an emotional so, address for you though as yeah, well? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. What? Because if, you know, I've probably got 15 years of cooking left in me. Right. Right. So if I can cook, I've got, if I can get this to be an iconic restaurant alongside Burner's Tavern and Pollen Street Social and have mm. free addresses like that, I mean, I never believed I'd even own a restaurant, never mind be part of all this. It's incredible, right? And yeah. then just leave a legacy for my team to continue to work. So obviously Maze has had a, had a great journey and it was a real institution, but obviously it's come to an end now. But Pollen Street Social is still going strong. People still love that restaurant. You, you don't mess with it because it, it works. Yeah, absolutely. Why do you think one lasted and one didn't? Well. Pollen Street has my full attention. Yeah. You know, I, I, even when I'm here, like driving in this morning, it's a conference call with my chef. We've just changed the lunch menu. What's the feedback? How's it going? Doing da 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 da. I, can't, I, I never let go of it. Yeah. Like this afternoon, I'll be down there. Mm. Tonight, after service from here, I'll go down there. Yeah. So customers see me. I mean, the boys in the kitchen know that at some point during the day, I'll be in that yeah. restaurant. Once this is set up, I'll go back there and I'll be, I'm always based out of there. Yeah. Uh, I'll be based here for a month until we get it uh, operational. And then I'll be down here two, three times a week yeah. uh, doing services. But once this is up and running, this is Paul's Walsh, my right hand man. He's yeah. the chef patron here. And then I go back to my home in Pollen Street. So, so uh, Paul obviously comes from City Social. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of thing can we expect from you guys working together? Is there going to be is it going to be drastically different because of the the location, or what can we expect? Well, well, the we've got is, a few dishes it, here. It, so the dream, the dream, the dream always was to open up a really sophisticated grill restaurant, and calling it a grill restaurant sort of like doesn't do it justice because everyone knows okay, grill, grill, what, what, but. When we show you the kitchen later, we've got these beautiful uh, grills from the Basque region of, of northern Spain where we cook over, one cooks over uh, charcoal, one cooks over bincho, the Japanese yeah. Japanese grill. Um, and so the idea of it is that everything what we prep or do has some sort of contact, unless it's raw like this, yeah. has some sort of contact with the grill. Okay. So, But it, we'd elevate it to a new, a new level, right? So it's all very sophisticated, it's all very well considered. Uh, and we push that concept to yeah. to the end of its, you know, to, 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 the, to the nth degree, right? Am I right in thinking uh, sides are a big thing here? Yeah, yeah. So, so the idea is that London's so packed with great restaurants now. Yeah. There's nothing worse, and I agree with the critiques on this one. There's nothing worse than going to a restaurant and the waiter goes, "Sorry, but have you dined with us before? Do you know our concept?" Right? What is the concept? Is every, it the, everyone we? wants to hang <laughs> themselves, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like. There is no concept. We just cook good food. Yeah. Right. So, starters tells its own story. You can either share them or eat them individually. Yeah. Right. Um, main courses. There are individual main courses. You could just pop in and have a main course, or yeah. there is a lot of proteins for two and for singles, where you could just have the protein in the middle. Yeah. And then we've made the side orders really interesting. So normally, in a normal restaurant, you would have um, chips, mixed salad. Cream spinach, yep. the usual eagles. suspects, yeah. right? I said none of that, apart from the chips, right? We have to have chips have in to, the UK, That's right? the law, I think. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Not duck fat, beef, beef, beef tripping. Okay. 
So, so what we, but apart from those, we've done interesting things like braised, um, uh, uh, compressed and braised um, autumn root vegetables with pheasant casserole as a yeah. side dish, right? Wow, okay. Right? And then we've done um, uh, like uh, this like nori and uh, so it's like a, it's like a, our take on a, a Japanese Caesar salad, do you mean? Okay. As a salad. And then we've done like this amazing snow pea salad with Stickleton blue cheese. We've done, it's like to every, they can almost be like a dish in their own right. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. they're the interesting part of the meal, do you mean? Okay, yeah, yeah. And then you just have a simple veal cutlet with right, a beautiful yeah. sauce on top. So you share that and then you share the sides, right? So you want people to be like, come in and yeah. almost the, the sides are going to take over in that sense. Yeah, that's absolutely. What they're going to love. Yeah. And bear in mind, so as you say, you've got restaurants in Dubai, Shanghai, New York, globally. Is there a very different approach coming to London? I mean, 60% of my time is always spent in London, the number one city in the world. Right. And I don't care what anybody says. And I have restaurants all over the world. Mm. This has men's fashion, women's fashion, great media, great magazines, freedom of speech, amazing restaurants, amazing bars. You go to anywhere and when you're from London, mm. people want to know what's going on here. People are obsessed by London. We have it all, do you mean? Yeah. That's, my diary has to be 6% of my time is in London in my restaurant. So right. be able to, so to work alongside Alex R uh, and Hilton and, um, and the chairman on this mm. project is, a no-brainer for me. I get to come back to Grosvenor Square. I get one of the hottest, hottest addresses in London. That's, let's that's just the dream, right? Let's touch on that, the idea. You said you never thought you'd own a restaurant. So I think the first hotel you were in wasn't a beautiful Mayfair address. It was, it was the Maryland Hotel in Skegness. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my mum and stepfather's uh, hotel, yeah. And so how old were you when you were there? Oh, I was about eight. Okay. My and parents split up when I was four. Uh, so they bought that when I was about eight. And it was normal for us to be around hospitality, right? Even though yeah. it was very basic in its, in, in its form. But our treat on a Friday night was when everyone was playing bingo, we were allowed to sit at the top of the stairs and listen, have a bag of crisps and a, and a, and a bottle of Coke. And yeah. that was our treat for the week, me and my sister. And, and you know, to think now that, you know, 30, 30 odd years, no, what's that, 40 years later that I'm sat in Mayfair with a, yeah. the opening the 19th restaurant, having Michelin stars in New York, London, it's like, it's crazy. I mean, sometimes it's, I, I try not to think about it too much. It's just crazy. It's only really been like that for me for the last sort of like six years, maybe, that my right. life's been a little bit more luxurious. Yeah. Because it was almost like I was, I felt guilty to let myself have anything nice. Right. So even at the yeah. first four years of Pollen Street, even though it was extremely successful, it made yeah. a lot, no, it didn't make a lot of money. It made good money. Yeah. A lot of money for me, mm. but not a lot of money in the, in the big world. And, and I almost, was scared to go and buy a nice watch or a yeah. nice suit because I was like, well, I don't really deserve this, right? So it okay. was just always kept in the bank. And Was there a know? fear that it would go one day? Yeah. Yeah. Still today. Really? Yeah, still Despite today. Despite all the restaurants? Still and today. Is that what keeps you going? A little bit. But also, like, all of this only happened because I work extremely hard. Yeah. And rightly or wrongly, some people say you need therapy. I don't know, whatever, right? But, but I just, it's the only thing I know. Yeah. I have a talent with food and I can create nice spaces with designers and I just work hard. I don't know. I just don't know any I don't know anything different, right? Do you yeah. The best name, can you talk us through a little bit? Is that the connection to you and your family and Yeah, yeah, well my, well era started or, um era st my wife's from the Philippines, mm. uh, as, as you may or may not know, and, and she um, in the Philippines, they're taught, obviously they're taught their own language, uh, which is as Bisaya um, in the mid region of, 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 of the Philippines. And the second language is always, they're taught English, mm -hmm. but they're taught the Queen's English. Right, okay. So obviously I'm from a, 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 a pretty basic school in Skegness and we're not taught the Queen's English, right? And so she's using these words like, oh, for the betterment of the family. Right. And, and, I'm, and I'm like, what does you, that mean? Sorry, just go back a word, what I'm was like, that? What, what does that mean? Yeah. And she goes, betterment. And I'm like, well, I don't understand what it means. And yeah. she's like, well, it's your language, you should know. And I'm like, no, I don't. And she's like, <laughs> Well, it just means like progress. Yeah. Do you mean? It means yeah. over a journey of time, you've got better. Yeah. Do you mean? And she started using this word quite a bit. Uh, and I was like, that's a really nice word, do you mean? And then we were having lunch and we were talking about what do we call this place, right? Yeah. And she goes, why don't you call it the Betterment? She goes, mm -hmm. you know, you, us as a company and you as a person and us as a family over the last 10 years because of all the hard work. Yeah. You know, our lives is now you know has betterment in it right the family you know and i was like yeah i like that it's an english word it's 
It's a nice word. It's easy for people to it say. Fitz Mayfair. Yeah. Yeah. And so we put it to the chairman. The chairman loved it. Yeah. And here we are. It is a tough industry for people, and they do need to reach out and sort of ask for help and support and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do you think it is about the restaurant industry, or, or do you think that needs to change for people to feel like they can reach out, or the, or the problems that they might have with this? Not obsession with bravado, but there is a certain need, it does seem, among certain chefs to keep up with the big boys or to go out uh, yeah. late, go out after it's service, a, that kind of thing. It's a fine line, isn't it, right? Because you, cause, you, know, you, you go into a fine line of, when you talk about mental health issues or you talk about uh, depression or anything like that, it's when people have real struggles. Mm. You know, like for instance, I had, a, I had a young lady on the on on the chef's brigade, Daisy, who was, who really went in a dark place on Ep One, and I'd never seen anything quite like it. Do you? Yeah. And I knew it was quite serious, so we put her in. We put her as a kitchen porter, just to take the pressure off. Started talking to her, you know, bringing her through. Spent a bit off camera. Spent a lot of personal time with her. Yeah. Uh, working on you know stuff and so mm -hmm. forth and. And then slowly but surely she got her confidence back and you could yeah. see the sun shining, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's a delicate thing, right? You have to be very careful because in this industry, the hours are long. Like, yeah. Not always, do no. you know It's like today, you know, I, I started at 7 a.m. and I'll be done tonight at midnight. Okay. But to me, it's become normal, Okay. right? And I'm not saying I'm normalizing it, but I'm saying that I'm happy, I'm okay, but I can deal with it because my mental attitude strong enough, but some people don't have that mental attitude mm -hmm. strong enough. And you have to be very careful to make sure that you manage that for people, right? Yeah. Do you know? What do you think about Instagram and the influence it's having on cooking? And it's great. Do, do you think yeah. it's having an impact yeah. on the way that you present and you do, work? Do you know what I like? What I like about it is I don't, I, 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 I do it alongside my wife, but my wife does mine because I just don't want to be sucked into the world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just, my life's busy enough. <laughs> so, 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 sort of the office do some of it. My wife does it. But, yeah. but what's important for me is, is now is like in the olden days we only had uh, newspapers. Yes. So, so you absolutely needed a great review from Fame National. Yes. You absolutely needed a great review from A. A. Gill. Mm -hmm. Uh, you absolutely needed a great review from Matthew Fort from the Old Guardian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all of those boys who were incredible uh, critiques and face dealers, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the thing is, like, if you if you got it wrong, you were done. If yeah. all of those categories said your restaurant were your restaurant wasn't great, mm. you're done. Whereas now, of course, it still matters. Absolutely, you want to get it right because it's personal pride mm. anyway. But through the power of Instagram. Mm. The customer now can make their own mind up yeah. if they're going to like it or not. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Because I they can mean. they can put in the betterment, hashtag the betterment, mm. and they can say, I like the look of that food, I'm going to go and try it. Yeah. Whereas they had no reference point before. Mm. It's only what they said in the newspaper. Yeah, that is true. Do you see what I mean? Does that mean that it would impact the way that you might put together a dish? No. No. I don't buy into that whole thing. It's, so you, it's my guys say it, they say, oh, chef, that dish is so Instagrammable. I'm like, oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. But you're thinking, look, you see it, you like it, you come. If yeah. you don't like it, don't come. You know, come. for me, flavor. Yeah. Everything we produce has to taste magnificent. And if it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't go on the menu. I'm still old school with about flavor because if you think about this, right, here's the thing, right? Everyone has those memories where you go on holiday. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you go to Greece, you go to Spain, you go, everyone's got these stories. I don't care who they are. And you go, God, can you remember that tomato dish, what we had in Spain? Yeah. Didn't it taste great? And you yeah. remember that for 10 to 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't sit there and go, hey, can you remember when we had that tomato dish in Spain? Yeah. Didn't it look fabulous? No That's one true. ever says that. You That's always true. say taste, always. You mentioned Michelin there. How much of an impact? Coming that... up soon, October 7th. Yeah. Do you have ambitions for stars here? Is it something you think about with your restaurants? No. No, I never do it. And, and do you know why? It's because when you're younger, you do. And mm. you can't help yourself. I don't care what anyone says. It's only with maturity when you get older that all that matters are these people, right? Yeah. If I've trained, I've worked in six freestyle restaurants. I know what it takes to, 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 to work and, and see freestyle food. But the bottom line is freestyle food is not food you want to eat every day. Yeah. And when I create a restaurant like this, what's got to feed the hotel, the public, people for lunch, one course, 
you know, if Michelin come and they love it and they give us a star, I would be elated. Yeah. If they don't, as long as the restaurant is fully booked mm. and people like it and we can keep it at a good price point and it becomes an icon, like Berners Tavern. Yeah. It's one of the most successful restaurants in London for the last six years. Yeah. And today, fully booked, right? Yeah. And it's like, does it have a Michelin star? No. Oh, it's a great restaurant though. It doesn't, it doesn't need the star to be great. And yeah. Exactly. And I just think it's Pollen Street, absolutely. Did I yeah. want a Michelin star there? hundred percent. Yeah. Did I work towards it? Yes. But it never clouded my judgment of the fact that I borrowed four million pounds to build that restaurant. And if it didn't work, I was literally out on the street. No joke. Yeah. I had my mortgage against it. I had everything against it. And if that restaurant didn't work, I was finished. Yeah. Right. And in the back of my mind, of course, Michelin was there, but at the same time, I was cooking food to please the guests. Yeah. Because I wanted them to come back so I could pay the bills. Yeah. Right. And thank God, I thank God I did. Right? And I guess then, then the final thing, just to sort of touch where we started, which was, it's uh, it's, it's you last time you're here. You're at Maze. Suddenly you head down in the kitchen, but you start hearing that you've suddenly got a five star review here. Michelin have been in and they love it and another world 50 best drops that must have been such an exciting time for you do you still get that level of excitement and thrill or is it a different feeling now and if it is different oh no what of course is I do. it of course I do because the thing is the amount of effort like we've been on this project for, for 12 months yeah the amount of effort going into this project is colossal do you mm. know? people only see the finished product and it's still we've still got a week to finish it now but we're just soft openings but the amount of effort that goes into opening any restaurant yeah you know we, we I want to feel that excitement and that challenge of making this restaurant great you know I, I you know I go to bed at night thinking about it mm. you know we did 100 people last night had a great atmosphere but there were still mistakes yeah. so we debrief at the end of the night this morning before breakfast we start to correct those mistakes do you mean yeah and then you can see the next day it gets better right and then it gets better and mm. that's so satisfying yeah. and then six months time hopefully fingers crossed it's running smooth people like it yeah and you know the the, the 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 chatter and the you know there's nothing better like you know every now and again someone will stop you in the street and go i had my birthday party at Holland street social or yeah. Berners tavern thank you so much for a wonderful night and i think oh, it's great that's what that's it that's it's everything. great that's what it's all about fantastic thank you so much for your time really appreciate thank it thank you for everything i appreciate it